The original Flintstones aired between 1960 and 1966. There's talk of a new Flintstones coming to Fox I'll talk about later, but first the main focus of this video is the first time a spin-off of the original series came out, and that was in 1971. It was called Pebbles and Bam Bam, and it was all about being fun for kids, which is a kind of a crazy thought these days. I mean, who would make a cartoon for kids just to make them laugh? The Pebbles and Bam Bam Show was a Saturday morning cartoon and would lead to the Flintstones basically owning Saturday mornings during the 70s and 80s, almost as much as Scooby-Doo. I mean, there was all kinds of variations. That included Fred and Barney Meet the Thing, Fred and Barney Meet the Schmoo, Flintstones Comedy Hour, the comedy show, the Flintstones Kids, and even episodes on prime time in the form of a few specials here and there in TV movies. Pebbles and Bam Bam, it wasn't as good as the original series, but it wasn't an insult to it either. I mean, which is kind of what I'm afraid the new Fox series might be. I mean, who knows until it airs, but I mean, maybe a miracle will happen. But uh, anyway, Pebbles and Bam Bam in 1971 focused on the teenage years of these characters. They used some of the old gags as the original show, like the prehistoric gadgets that were usually made to work with small dinosaurs or birds. You know, I never could figure out how those phones worked back then without electricity or anything else. Operator? Hello? Hello, operator? Hello? Hello? Mm. Weirdly enough, I looked through all the episode descriptions and scanned around my DVD collection of this series and... You know, I didn't find any appearances of Dino. Like, where was he? Now, I know he did show up on the next season when the series turned into the Flintstone Comedy Hour. If it weren't for that, I'd almost think Dino had gotten old and passed away. How could you have a Flintstones without Dino? The only thing that threw me off was the fact that from 1971 onward, Bam Bam on any of the Saturday morning Flintstone shows was no longer super strong. That bugs me to this day. What happened to Bam Bam by his teenage years that, I mean, he should have been as strong as Superman by now. He was stronger as a toddler than the teenage Bam Bam. Interestingly enough, there's an episode where Pebbles drinks a strength formula on the Pebbles and Bam Bam show and gets the same level of strength you would have expected Bam Bam to have. I don't have any problems with Bam Bam's personality on this show. I don't like it or not. Really, but I, I don't know. I, I think I would have made him more of a surfer dude. Like I did with my character Doug, son of Lug, from my Stone Age modern family of time travelers that star in my book series, Caveman Comics. Now this is Doug Lug. He sounds like he's straight out of the 80s. Whoa, Dad. Are you like totally okay? Whoa. Like, see you later, Dad. All right. Bye. Sort of like, uh... Jeff Spicoli from Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I stick around to the end and I'll tell you about my brand new Caveman Comics Book 5. The Pebbles and Bam Bam show had Fred, Barney, Wilma, and Betty all there and they all appeared to seem to uh, avoid any kind of aging. Cartoon characters are just so lucky that way. Most of the old Flintstones voice cast was back including Alan Reed as Fred, Gene Vanderpeel as Wilma, and Mel Blanc as Barney. What I find fascinating, though, is who voices Bam Bam and Pebbles. Bam Bam was voiced by Jay North, the child star that brought the comic strips Dennis the Menace to life in a very popular comedy that ran from 1959 to 1963. Relax, Peb. We got plenty of time. Jay hasn't had a lot of work since then. He's credited with a couple more things for the Flintstones and a handful of other shows. Here he is doing a skit in 1987 and mocking himself as an out-of-work child actor on Not Necessarily the News. Jay, in an exclusive heartfelt one-on-one -on -one interview about the joys of being a child star and growing up in Hollywood. In 91, he told Katie Couric he hated with a passion working on Dennis the Menace, mostly due to his aunt and uncle who was responsible for him on the set. He did speak highly of the cast, which is good. The cast was wonderful. Herb Anderson, Gloria Henry, Jeannie Russell, uh, all wonderful people. And but it's unfortunate that he hates the series with such a passion because it was such a fun show to watch. It's made me laugh a lot over the years. He did an interview in 2011 with a couple of his fellow castmates from Dennis the Menace, and at this point it didn't seem to show any bitterness to the show, but that, of course, that could have been out of respect for his castmates and possibly for his fans as he was doing a convention appearance at the time. 
It feels wonderful <laughs> just to be reunited with these lovely ladies. Pebbles was voiced by Sally Strutters. You know, Gloria from All in the Family. Yep, a dab -a doozy Just from that series, I would have never thought of her as Pebbles, ever. But she did okay. After all, I am the star. Looking at her credits, it doesn't look like she uh, ever did any additional voice work as Pebbles later on after this series, but she did do a lot of uh, other animated series here and there, like Tom and Jerry Kids and Tiny Toons Adventures. One of the uh, friends of Pebbles and Bam Bam named Moonrock was voiced by Lenny Wayne Rib. Hopefully I pronounced it correctly. It only works at my command. Watch! He was all over Saturday mornings for years, including a live-action Saturday morning segment of the Croft Super Show, Magic Mongo, in the 70s, and as the voice of H&R Puffin stuff. And maybe you remember this ABC nutrition spot he did, Time for Timer, back in the 70s and 80s. Bang, bang! <laughs> Oh, howdy, partner. Time for timer. Do you ever get that hungry feeling after school? I must have seen that ad a million times growing up. Oh, and you might remember Inch High Private Eye, the tiny detective. Don Messick, the original voice of Scooby-Doo, does the voice of one of the kids in the show named Schlepprock. What you got there, Pebbles? It was my masterpiece till you showed up. In his lifetime, he used his voice on countless cartoons. He was Astro, Papa Smurf, Ranger Smith, Muttley, Banded, a couple of Transformers, one of the Tiny Toons, Scarecrow from the Challenge of the Super Friends, and just on and on and on. Unfortunately, he passed away back in 1997 at the age of 71. Uh, okay. <laughs> Scooby Dooby Doo. Schlepprock was totally jinxed. Every time he walked into a room, something would break. Hi, fellas. Miserable day, isn't it? Yeah. Now, Alan Reed did Fred's voice pretty much up until his death. His last turn as Fred Flintstone was a cameo on Scooby's All-Star Life Olympics. Gene Vanderpeel was doing the voice of Wilma Flintstone pretty much up until her death in 1999. Gay Hartwig took over as the voice of Betty Rubble that was previously voiced by Gary Johnson and Petticoat Junction's B. Benaderet, who had to quit the original series due to scheduling conflicts. No blank was Barney Rubble, of course, but this wasn't the only caveman voice he did for Hanna Barbera. The king of Saturday morning himself, Mel Blank, did the voice of Captain Caveman. Captain Caveman! Blank was famous for his work on Looney Tunes, where he voiced Bugs Bunny and, well, almost all the characters from the Looney Tunes, like Marvin the Martian, Tweety, Porky Pig, Daffy Duck, and Elmer Fudd, just to name a few. He also did a ton of voices for Hanna Barbera, including the voice of Barney Rubble. He also had his own radio show, and he was a big part of the Jack Benny show from the golden age of television and radio. <laughs> Looking at the latest rendition of the Flintstones heading to Fox, based on 90% of what has been released in recent years, and particularly what they've done to Scooby-Doo in the latest movie in the series Velma, I'm not super op optimistic about the series entitled Bedrock. I was reading a story about it on a news site that described the new Flintstones as a primetime adult comedy series. Now back when the Flintstones first aired in the 60s, adult might just mean it's intelligent or it has the storylines that uh, adults and kids both could enjoy. But adult these days usually means something that isn't fit for kids, but of course kids will probably end up watching it anyway. Likely it's not going to be for fans of the original show that actually love these characters. It's going to be yet another opportunity to push a Hollywood agenda to middle America. And they may not care if they disrespect the source material in the process. I hope I'm wrong, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Well, all I can say is there is always DVDs of the original stuff to watch. I'll put a link to uh, the old Flintstones and Pebbles and Bam Bam DVD sets in the description below. And if you order those from Amazon through the link, it'll give us a little bit of a commission and help the channel out. Appreciate it. So, as I mentioned, being a fan of classic cartoons like the Flintstones, I wanted to create my own characters that were different, but sort of in a similar vein. My characters from K-Man Comics are like a mixture of all the stuff I loved as a kid. It's sci-fi adventure meets crazy comedy, like 
What if you took the Flintstones, the Time Machine by H.G. Wells, the older Simpsons, when they were still decent, and the Looney Tunes, and all rammed them into one? The main character, Uglug, is a crazy caveman with a bad attitude that falls in love with a very intelligent Anne and brain smart, who travel to his time when her rocket ship gets lost. When they make it back to our time, married and with a son, Ugg must adapt to the modern world. In the meantime, they run into all kinds of crazy adventures. The last uh, or the latest book has the whole cast of characters in a parallel world or parallel worlds, and one is overran with zombies that look just like them. I've got some cartoons based on the book series on this channel and my new channel, Freddy Cat Cartoons. I be great if you could check those out. Please subscribe, hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. I talk a lot about classic TV here, superheroes, cartoons, and sometimes comic books. It's mostly stuff I grew up with that never seems to grow old. Share some of your Flintstone memories in the comments below and let me know what you think about the video. Thanks and have a great day.